Hello everyone, my name is Mavit Gatlun from Paderborn University, Germany. I'm going to present our work, which is titled Permanent Magnet Synchronous Motion Temperature Estimation using low-order lamp parameter thermal network with an extended error loss model. This presentation is consisting of five main sections. We start with background and motivation, followed by theoretical background of lamp parameter thermal network which is abbreviated as LPTN afterwards. Then we will see low order LPTN model implementation with an extended error loss model as part of it, which is the original work of this contribution. And finally, we will have result and conclusion section. Let's start with background and motivation. An electric machine under consideration of this work is water cool PMS machine for an automotive application. So we have a speed and torque profile and the drive system software, which is a field-oriented current controller in our case. It gives us the desired voltage level to achieve this profile using a pre-recorded machine data and a real-time measurement of current and angular position. And also it's important to monitor the temperature of the machine in, in real time because a very high water temperature can cause a stator winding damage as it can happen for any kind of machine. And we have to, be, we have to give a special attention to PMC machine because the PM material is highly sensitive to change in temperature. Now let's see real-time temperature monitoring techniques, which can be classified into direct measurement and estimation techniques. The state of the art in the direct measurement is to use a contact type thermocouples to measure the temperature of stationary parts and to use a rotor wireless telemetry or brush to read temperature readings from a moving rotor. And estimation is to use an analyzing software which processes exogenous machine variables such as current, speed, torque, voltage, and ciliary temperature, such as the temperature of the cooling fluid in real time. Again, estimation technique can be classified into direct estimation, which is thermal modeling, including LPTA, and indirect estimation techniques, which, would, which uses observer meters, such as flex observer or current observer. Next, we will see about theoretical background of LPTA. In a direct estimation or thermal modeling technique, LPTN is all about solving a heat diffusion equation of a particular volume unit under its geometrical constraints. So this gives us an equation which replaces the second derivative terms here by a new term called thermal resistance. So generally, for parts of electric machine, LPTN can be stated as the time change of the the time change of temperature is either caused by the heat power generated inside the volume unit or is due to the heat power transferred from other parts of the machine in contact with the volume unit we are considering. Therefore, the LPT model is a first order differential equation which is analogous with an electric RSC circuit. Instead of parameterizing the thermal resistances, in the heat capacitances using the material and geometrical data. In our case, we use parameter identification. In order to model the thermal resistances using system identification, it's important to know the mode of heat transfer from one part of the machine to another, whether it is conductive, convective, or radiative. In our case, the effect of radiation is neglected because it's very less comparing to conductive and convective. Once we know we can solve LPT in using system identification, the next section is what are the challenges with that? The first challenge is into how many thermal components we are dividing the machine into, which is directly related to the question, how can we know the power loss in each component? The proposed solution for this is to use an extended error loss. And the second challenge is varying parameters. LPTN is not linear time invariant system. For example, the thermal resistance between stator winding and the PM varies with the change in speed. So the proposed solution for this is to model LPTN as a linear parameter varying model. 
The third challenge is embedded system implementation. We need LPTN to estimate temperature in real time. Therefore, the updating time of the software has to be lesser than the thermal transient of the machine. And that depends on the number of parameters we are estimating and also how sophisticated our model is. Generally, the computation time has to be lesser than the updating time. And the proposed solution for this is to use a low order LPTN model. Next, we will see about low-order LPTN model implementation, which is feasible for real-time temperature estimation. For this purpose, the machine is divided into fewer thermal components. In our case, it's divided into stator yoke, stator winding, stator tooth, and PM, depending on the location of thermocouples. And also, we have ancillary temperature nodes, which are cool, the temperature of the cooling water and the ambient air temperatures. So these temperature nodes are connected each other via thermal resistances. The four nodes, the four main nodes here are to be estimated using LPTN, whereas the ancillary temperature nodes are the real-time temperature measurements, which are used as an input in the estimation process. So the LPTN software implementation is solving the thermal circuit equation. First, the derivative term is approximated using Euler forward method with sampling time 0.5 second. Uh, and the uh, thermal capacitance term is assumed as uh, operating point independent, whereas the power loss in thermal resistance are operating point dependent. Therefore, they are modeled outside by themselves as a parameter varying the terms. Next, we will see about thermal resistances, which can be divided into conductive and convective depending on the mode of heat transfer. Conductive thermal resistances are between solid nodes, such as between stator yoke and stator winding, or between stator yoke and stator tooth. They are generally they don't generally vary throughout the operating point of the machine, so they can be directly part of the parameter identification. Whereas convective thermal resistances involve fluids, therefore the value can vary based on the operating point of the machine. For example, thermal resistance between the water the water jacket and stator yolk depends on temperature of the water. Therefore, it's modeled here using this linear equation. So the parameters R and alpha are part of the parameter identification. Similarly, the thermal resistance which connects stator winding or stator to the PM involves an, the air gap fluid, which also depends on the speed of the shaft. So this relation is modeled using this equation. So the parameters are here. B and alpha are part of the parameter identification. So the next remaining section is power loss. Keeping the ancillary temperatures constant, the biggest machine temperature dynamics comes from the power loss dynamics. So its accurate modeling can lead to accurate temperature estimation. For this purpose, power loss is classified into iron loss and winding loss. The iron loss component goes to the machine components of PM, stator tooth, and stator yoke, whereas the winding loss goes to the stator winding node. Calculating the winding power loss is quite straightforward from the winding resistance and measured current, but it's important to include the effect of temperature and the skin effect, so which results in this equation. So the parameters which still we don't know are the resistance and the alpha and beta here, so they are part of parameter identification. When we come to iron laws, the entire idea of extended iron laws is to adapt this two term iron laws density equation for machine application. So we are going to see that in detail in the next section. So the two term iron laws density equation is the sum of hysteresis loss and eddy current losses, which depend on frequency and magnetic, maximum magnetic flux density. It's easy to calculate the frequency from angular speed, but it's almost impossible to know the maximum flux density in each component of the machine. So here it's modeled by dividing it into D and Q components in synchronous frame. The D component is contributed by the PM in the D direction current. Similarly, the Q component is the Q component comes from the Q direction current. The 
flux density which came from the permanent magnet is assumed here as constant so it's directly part of parameter identification whereas the current dependency of the maximum flux density can be modeled these equations which resembles ma ma the magnetic saturation characteristics so the parameter m will be part of the parameter identification later on Therefore, we have three distinguished but similar models for the three parts of the machine. We assume the heat power is generated due to the iron loss. These are for the PM, for the stator yoke and stator tooth. This is due to the flex density vector is not rotating in the same direction in different parts of the machine. For example, it's tangential in stator yoke and it's radial in PM and stator tooth. And the other reason is all the flux densities in one component are not binding to the other one. The next remaining part is the hysteresis and eddy current coefficients, which also depends on frequency, maximum flux density, and temperature. So first we we first we model the dependency of this this coefficients on the maximum flux density, keeping frequency and temperature constant. This is done by using polynomial regression to epistian measurements. So uh, a two-order polynomial regression was needed to model the hysteresis loss, and a fifth-order polynomial regression was needed to model the eddy current loss. These regressions are made at two frequencies, 50 Hz and 1000 Hz in our case. So we ended up having four polynomial equations for KH at high frequency and KH low frequency, and Ke at high frequency and Ke at low frequency. The next step is to find the dependency of the coefficients on frequency. This is done by combining linearly the, the coefficients we got as a function of maximum flex density at high and low frequencies. Therefore, at high frequency, this term will be dominating, and at low frequency, this term will be dominating, and in between, it will be the effect will be the combination of the two. So, for the hysteresis coefficient as a function of flux and the maximum flux density, it looks like this, and similarly for eddy current loss coefficient as a function of flux and the maximum flux density, the it looks like this. And eventually, the dependency of the coefficients on temperature is modeled using a linear equation. But in this case, alpha is part of a parameter identification. Next, we will see about parameter identification. So in order to parameterize our low-order LPTN model, which has around 43 parameters, a 140-hour measurement, measurement data is prepared. We estimate the temperature using initial parameters and we compare that estimation with the measured data and we minimize, we minimize the, likely, the likelihood cost function which minimizes the estimation error. Then the parameters are iteratively updated using particle swarm optimization algorithm until the minimum possible estimation error is reached. The next section is to evaluate the performance of our LPTN model using measurement data, which is not part of system identification. So we choose a profile which is consisting of all possible speed and torque dynamics and also temperature of the cooling water. So we see here the time series of the estimated temperature and measured temperature. As we can see, it's tracking it very well. But for better comparison, it's also good to see estimation error. So here it is the time series of estimation error for the four nodes, stator yoke, stator winding, stator tooth, and the PM. The maximum absolute error is 6.2 Kelvin and that's for the PM including outliers in measurement data. We can also see here the histogram of the estimation error. So the mean for all case, for the three cases is nearby zero and for the PM it's minus 1.8 so there is still a room for improvement in the model and the variance is, the maximum variance is 3.16 kelvin square 
So generally we can conclude that it's possible to implement this model in microcontroller because we have less computational load which needs only 43 parameters. So for this purpose we need a real-time inputs of speed and current which we need them also for the machine controlling purpose. In the meanwhile we need also in addition we need also to measure cooling water temperature and cabin air temperature. So with this, a satisfactory estimation is achieved with a maximum absolute estimation error of 6.2 Kelvin, an average mean close to zero, with a variant with an average variance of 2.1 Kelvin square. But there is still a room for improvement comparing to the golden standard of Gaussian distribution for a white noise, it may be with special focus of the PM model. So that's all about my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and you may contact me with my email address if you have further questions.